So maceration is something you might hear discussed on YouTube, especially in the context of affordable Middle Eastern fragrances, such as those from Latafa, from Afnan, from Swiss Arabian, and various other companies. But what does maceration actually mean? And has the definition of maceration changed over time? What do people mean when they comment on videos saying that you perhaps need to let the fragrance macerate? What are they getting at? So I'm Claire Smith and I'm a scientist and I'm just going to discuss the term maceration. I'm going to talk to you really about the fact that there are three major different and conflicting definitions of maceration in the world of fragrance. And I'm going to discuss all three and tell you what I think the terminology actually should be for what is commonly called maceration on YouTube. So if you haven't seen me before, I'm Claire Smith. I make videos all about perfume, perfume science, perfume history, perfume psychology, and I also just do some straight perfume reviews and also fun perfume tags. So if, if you are interested in this kind of thing and you haven't done already, then please do consider subscribing and please also like this video if you do like this kind of content. So what's prompted this video? What's really made me want to make a video about maceration? Well, having been watching a lot of YouTube over several years, I've seen so many people talk about macerating their fragrances, about discussing before and after maceration. And it just struck me, why are these people talking about this when this is something that I would expect that perfume companies would have completed before a fragrance goes to market? Why are people talking about maceration when the fragrance should be ready to wear after it's bottled? So... I wanted to look into this and really investigate what was going on. So I really hope by the end of this video, you will understand what the term maceration can mean and what people mean by it on YouTube and how you can use the process that people might term maceration yourself on your own fragrances and how you would go about doing that. So let's start off with what is maceration. And I'm going to talk through three different definitions. So originally, maceration was used to describe the extraction of aroma chemicals from a natural substance. So when you think about how fragrances are made, how fragrance ingredients are made, most natural substances come from objects. They come from flowers or they come from seeds or they come from leaves. Of course, they can be made synthetically, some of them. But if you're actually getting them from nature... You need to basically turn a solid, such as a flower, into a liquid, such as an oil, that contains the fragrance molecules in that flower. So how would you go about doing that? So this is the first definition of maceration. It's a process by which you can extract aroma chemicals from things like flowers. So for example, you might take the flowers and you might soak them in oil. Oil is a substance that acts as a solvent, so the aroma chemicals are absorbed into the oil. The oil itself also breaks down the texture of the plant, it breaks down the cellular structure to break open the cells to extract those aroma chemicals. This is a process that's going to take anything from a day to two days to perhaps even a week, perhaps even longer, depending upon the type of substance that you want to extract the aroma chemicals from. And this kind of process, which is termed maceration if oil is being used, is one of many processes that could be used to extract aroma chemicals from natural substances. So another thing that could be used is called enfleurage. There's also CO2 extraction. There's also steam distillation and a few other things that can be done to natural substances. But that's the first definition. Maceration is basically taking a solid natural substance and extracting aroma chemicals in it using oils. So the second definition is all about the maturation process of a fragrance. This is really something that perfumers work out on a case by case basis for fragrances. So when perfumers are making a fragrance, there are really two very critical points of incubation for that fragrance. The first one is when the perfume oils are being mixed together. And this is really an optional stage of maturation. It's termed maturation. Basically, you leave the perfume oils together to mix. Some perfumers think that that's a great way to actually improve the final smell of the fragrance. Other perfumers, perhaps with different fragrances, might think that that's something that you don't really need to do. And so they might skip that and might just go straight to the second stage of maturation, 
which is actually called maceration. So this is the point at which you've added the alcohol to the fragrance. So perhaps you're making an eau de toilette, perhaps you're making an eau de parfum. And you actually need the perfume oils to be miscible with the alcohol and to dissolve eventually into the alcohol to create something that's uniform. So, you know, perfume oils and alcohol, they're eventually going to form one solution. The oils are going to dissolve in the alcohol, but that's going to take time. And that's really what maceration is aiming to allow for. It's allowing the oils to dissolve in the uh, alcohol fully. If you're using natural substances, there may be some solids that are left that may sediment in the solution. And those things you're not going to want in the bottle of finished fragrance. You're going to want to filter those out. And so if you're using very expensive natural ingredients, as some fragrance houses might be, you aren't going to want to waste those fragrance ingredients by not allowing those fragrance ingredients to fully incorporate into the alcohol. You're going to want to wait and allow them time to do that. So I think that most fragrances are going to be macerated for some length of time because it wouldn't make sense not to. The only exceptions that I can really see here would be if you've got something that's fully soluble in alcohol and that doesn't drop out of solution, that isn't something that's going to sediment. Perhaps you're not using naturals. Perhaps you're using synthetics that have been designed to fully dissolve very quickly into alcohols. If that's the case, then you might actually cut the maceration time or you might just cut maceration entirely. I'm not a perfumer, so I'm not sure how often that would occur that they wouldn't macerate a fragrance in, at, at all. But from my point of view, from having consulted a perfumer, I think that's quite unlikely. I think that there will always be some kind of maturation process of the finished fragrance before bottling, before filtering and then before bottling. So I spoke to a perfumer and I asked that perfumer why they would want to macerate their fragrances. They primarily said that they macerate their fragrances just because they smell more rounded, they smell more rich. And, you know, that's a very unscientific way of looking at things, isn't it? It's not very descriptive in terms of what's going on chemically. But what they mean is really that the fragrance molecules are fully dissolving in the alcohol, that perhaps there are some chemical reactions going on as part of that maceration process within the alcohol. Perhaps the fragrance is slightly changing in its chemical makeup and it just makes the fragrance a better fragrance. They also said to me that really maceration is a process that they find very variable. Some fragrances might need a long maceration, other fragrances quite a short maceration. They gave me the example of them macerating fragrances from anything from two weeks up to nine months or potentially a year. And I think that's really a very long time period for maceration. I would say in general, it's probably weeks rather than months, but I think it's gonna vary from fragrance to fragrance. And the maceration time is really gonna be dependent on the type of fragrance it is. So for example, if you've got a light sparkly citrus fragrance, you're probably not going to want to macerate that fragrance for very long at all, but if you've got a very base heavy fragrance, you're probably going to want to macerate that fragrance for a bit longer than potentially something more citrus based. So I think, you know, this is a, the kind of variable that is going to be perfume dependent, that is going to be very much down to the perfumer involved as well. And when I looked further into this on the internet, I was trying to find examples where perfume houses might reveal how long they macerate their fragrances for, where they might talk about the process of maceration. And the only example that I managed to find was one by Frederick Mal. So Frederick Mal actually give the example of portrait of a lady and they talk about how long they do each stage of the fragrance maturation process with portrait of a lady. So they say that they actually mix the perfume oils. So they do the maturation process for two weeks. They then add the alcohol and they actually macerate the fragrance for a total of four weeks, which makes the whole process of making the fragrance six weeks before it's then filtered and bottled. And they say that they found that this process works better when it's done in bulk. So they do a minimum of five kilos of fragrance at a time because they found from experience that the maceration process works better for them in those kinds of amounts. So also when I spoke to a perfumer, they said that it was very much a personal decision. They said that they kept trying the fragrance after certain time periods and they would, you know, then make a judgment call on when they felt the fragrance was stable, when they felt like the fragrance was at its richest point. 
without leaving it too long. Because, you know, why would a fragrance house want to leave it any longer than they needed to? Because it's going to cost them money, isn't it, to leave a fragrance longer than is needed. This is going to be very variable depending upon which fragrance house you're looking at. And it's also something that's going to be absolutely critical when you're making a new fragrance. So say you're developing a new fragrance, how are you ever going to check how that's going to smell as a finished product? You're going to need to speed macerate that fragrance, aren't you? So how would a perfumer go about speed macerating a fragrance? Well, actually, I've been looking at this topic for a long, long time, and I've been reading lots of posts to do with fragrance development. And one that really stuck out for me was one by Olfactive O, Olivia. And she was talking about developing a new fragrance with her own perfumer. And she was saying about him sending her samples that had been warmed on a kombucha plate. So a kombucha plate would be something that would warm something to just over 30 degrees, potentially. And that that warming is going to kickstart that maceration process. And it's going to really give somebody an idea of how the fragrance might smell after a period of maturation. So that is a quick and dirty way of fragrance developers being able to look at how a fragrance might smell after a proper period of maceration. I also found some evidence from Frederick Mal that they suggest that when perfumers are working with fresh lab samples, they just smell less beautiful, they're less stable and they are less powerful. So it's just really hard to tell what the finished product will smell like without some kind of speed maceration process. So I also talked to another perfumer and they said that maceration for them, as much as it's about the final smell of the fragrance, it's also about prevention of sedimentation after bottling. They said that there's nothing more annoying than when you've bottled a fragrance and then you get sedimentation in the bottle. It's something customers don't want to touch. It's something that could block atomizers. So it's a process that's going to be tested very fully before a process of how to make a fragrance is established and before bottling of the final product will occur. So which types of fragrance are going to benefit most from maceration? Well, I've already sort of said that maceration hinges on oils being diluted in alcohol so it's going to be the alcohol containing fragrances that are going to benefit and it's also going to be the fragrances with the richer bases rather than the lighter sparklier top notes. So next let's move on to the definition of maceration that really we all talk about on YouTube but nobody really explains. So this is the social media definition of maceration and I have absolutely no idea how this came about but I'm just going to talk about it. So The idea of maceration on YouTube is really something that occurs after you've bought the fragrance. So somebody's potentially bought a bottle of fragrance and they're not happy with it. They're not happy with how how long it lasts, with how strong it is, or perhaps with some aspect of how it smells. Perhaps they've heard somebody talk about the fragrance on social media. It's perhaps not living up to expectations. So the idea is that people take a fragrance they've bought, they open it, they take the bottle out and they give it a quick initial couple of sprays. And then they perhaps put the lid back on, give it a shake to distribute the oxygen around the bottle that they've just introduced to the, to the bottle from spraying it. And they might even leave the lid off to allow more air exchange with the atomizer. Uh, or they might put the lid back on And they will put it back into the box and they will leave it. They will leave it for a few weeks. Then they will come back, perhaps give it another shake, perhaps give it a spray, try it, perhaps compare it to how they thought it smelt a few weeks back and decide whether to continue macerating that fragrance in the box or whether to start wearing it. So what do people mean by maceration? This really, this whole process hinges around introduction of oxygen into the bottle. Now we know from my previous videos, we know from my video about whether fragrances expire, the oxidation is really the key thing along with light exposure that kickstarts the decorative process. The, the process that's going to break down your fragrance that's going to eventually mean that it's not as nice as it once was, that it's expired. So this maceration process really would be better termed as aging and where aging stops and where degradation starts is really very subjective it's really where the fragrance 
stops improving and starts getting worse. And that's going to vary from fragrance to fragrance and it's gonna vary depending upon who you are and how you like your fragrances. Of course, the process of aging a fragrance, of introducing oxygen into a bottle can change the smell of a fragrance. I do not doubt that at all. What I want to question is whether that process should be termed maceration or whether that process should be called aging. So if I would define this process as fragrance aging, where has this concept come about? And really, where has the term maceration come from in this context? I've been thinking about this and I, I honestly don't know. I, I'm beginning to wonder whether it's perhaps something that's grown out of a very popular fragrance. So perhaps a fragrance has been super popular and a fragrance brand has been forced to up production very suddenly. Perhaps there's been pressure on that brand. They've perhaps bottled the fragrance and got it to market very quickly. I'm not saying they've skipped the maceration at all, but perhaps they've taken it to market perhaps a lot quicker than perhaps they might do normally. So the fragrance hasn't sat in the bottle for very long at all. Perhaps there's then been some kind of disappointment by the person who's bought the fragrance. Perhaps it's not living up to their expectations. That person has then put the fragrance back in the box and has left it in a cupboard somewhere. They then take it out, it's aged, and they think it smells different. They think it's improved in some way. They then tell somebody, they perhaps talk about it on the YouTube channel. And then this idea of maceration and this idea of fragrance aging to improve the smell of the fragrance spreads. People watch this video, people do this process themselves. People actually think that this is changing the smell of the fragrance. They think it's improving the fragrance. They tell more people, etc. But that still doesn't explain where the term maceration has come from. Is it simply a confusion about how perfumers use the term maceration? Because the definition here is very, very different to me. So essentially, with this definition of maceration, you're aging your fragrance. So which types of fragrance might benefit most from this type of aging? Well, again, it's going to be the heavier base fragrances. It's not going to be the citrus fragrances that are going to benefit from this kind of aging process. Citrus fragrances really have a very short lifespan in bottles. And it's something that you probably don't want to encourage oxidation into bottles for very delicate fragrances, very green fragrances or citrus fragrances. Heavier fragrances such as ambers and, and ouds are probably going to benefit most from this kind of uh, process. So overall, why is there such a focus on the term maceration in relation to Middle Eastern fragrances, especially the more affordable Middle Eastern fragrances? Are they using entirely synthetic ingredients that are fully soluble in alcohol so that they may potentially skip the maceration process because there isn't going to be any sedimentation of their ingredients? Is that something that's going on? I would absolutely love to know this, but honestly, we don't know this. We don't know the inner workings of a fragrance company. We need somebody from that fragrance company to tell us. And anybody on YouTube who doesn't have that insider information is simply guessing. So of course, aging can change the smell of a fragrance and it can improve the smell of a fragrance. So you might have experienced this yourself when you've perhaps had an amber fragrance or a vanilla fragrance and you've left it for a bit and you've come back to it and it's potentially darkened because of the chemical reactions going on in that fragrance over time. And it's potentially become a much richer, perhaps fuller fragrance that perhaps you feel might last longer. The problem with judging how fragrances smell after they've aged with how they smelt originally is that you don't have the original fragrance there in front of you to compare with. And that presents a problem because you're relying on your scent memory to decide whether you think that fragrance has in effect changed over time. And we know that our memories are not necessarily that reliable. So I've made an entire video about fragrances smelling different on different people. And as part of that video, I discussed the factors that can really change your impressions of how fragrances smell. So it's not only the actuality of how fragrances smell, it's also the psychology of your thoughts about fragrances and your feelings and emotions on that particular day that you're smelling that fragrance. 
So it's really hard to say without having the two fragrances there in front of you and sniffing them side by side, whether a fragrance has changed, whether it's improved, whether it has a longer longevity, because you cannot really truly compare two versions of a fragrance when you only have one version of that fragrance currently in your possession. It's just not an accurate comparison to make. So that's really the problem that I have with these does my fragrance smell better after maceration videos because in effect you're just relying on someone's scent memory, you're relying on someone's opinion aren't you on how they think this fragrance smelt a few months ago when they first put it away and if that person's smelling a lot of fragrances and they're perhaps only trying it once or twice when they first open the fragrance, how reliable is their memory about how that fragrance smelt? So in conclusion, there are three distinct processes that could be termed maceration. And the definition of maceration that's on YouTube is really very separate to that used by perfumers when they talk about maceration. Also, I think the term maceration on YouTube might be better termed aging. And I also think that aging in itself can change how a fragrance smells. But... I think that comparisons made on YouTube may be problematic because of the way the comparisons are carried out and the inherent nature of those comparisons being with something that somebody smelt many months ago. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope that you've learned something in this video and I hope that this has been helpful for you. Have you ever done the YouTube version of maceration on your fragrances? Have you found that it's improved the smell of your fragrances? Is there a particular fragrance that you think has really benefited a lot from an aging process? Do you find the term maceration problematic on YouTube? Is it something that's confused you in the past? I'd be really interested to know. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have enjoyed this video, then please press the like button and please also consider subscribing if you haven't done already. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.